Okay, let me see uh, if I could get this on video. How one one method of uh, this is a poloscope. It, it's not really a, pol a true poloscope. It just has crosshairs in it. Uh, it's a regular findoscope, six by uh, twenty, I think, six by thirty, and held in with uh, ring mounts, as you can see. And the idea is, is how do I adjust this to get the optical axis of this in parallel with the hinge? Well, the first thing you could do is just ignore the hinge. You really don't do anything with observing the hinge. That just leave alone. Um, what we do is uh, take the platform and go like this while looking through the finder. And what will happen is on a distant, very distant, well, maybe not very distant, but outside, um, the crosshairs will appear on some, you know, background thing, object, building, trees, whatever. There's a couple hundred yards out from here. And uh, and if it's not lined up with the hinge, it's going to make a, uh, a a semicircle. That's the, the center of the crosshairs will make a semicircle. And the idea is to adjust the mounts to reduce that to effectively zero. This way, uh, when you go like this, you'll see no uh, no motion on the crosshairs. It'll be aiming exactly where the hinge is aiming. So that's the idea. Uh, further away, the better. But a couple hundred yards, like I have here, is just fine. Effectively, what it does is this distance from the, uh, the center of the finder to the center of the hinge is about two inches in this case. That two inches will be superimposed a couple, a couple a hundred yards away, and effectively it's uh, comes might as well might as well be infinity at that point. Doesn't matter. So what I'll do is this one is already lined up pretty well. I want to see if I can get this on on video and show you what to look for. So there we are. And you can see there's a, a background scene, and you can see the ordinary crosshair. And I'm going to move it now, and you'll see that the center of the crosshair stays pretty much in the same spot. So now I got the platform about 180 degrees open. Let me pull back and show you. See there it is, open. Go back, and you'll see it's in the same spot. Uh, the crosshair uh, of course rotates and that's um, optic to your eye it's a little bit confusing. You better if we just if there were just a dot there it'd be better. But or this works, this is in mine. Now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna throw it off balance. Let me just take a screw and go crazy here. Okay it's really out of whack now. Now watch what happens. There we go. Now, what it's doing is, if you look at the center of the crosshair, it's creating a, it's describing a circular path. And when you have a s scope that's not lined up properly, and you can see the background there, it's it's going to make a circle if I could go all the way around. The idea is to make these adjustments to get in on that, to reduce that circle to zero. So then whenever you move the mount, um, there'll be no motion in the middle. Right now there's, it's making a semicircle and the idea is, is, to, is to each iteration hopefully get it smaller and smaller. So like in this case you can see like right over here it really should be aiming uh, more towards where that cross hatch type thing is, and as we saw in the beginning, let me. So if I go like this, I should be at the center of that, maybe right about here. Let's try it now. And there it goes. It's a lot better. Now I'm at the center of that imaginary semicircle. So that's how you align these things. It's not too bad. Once you, and once it's tightened down, this will stay put. It, you don't have to mess with it too much. You just check it for each observing session and it should be okay.
and then just throw in the juice engage the motor and it's ready to go all it needs is a ball head in this case okay that's it